Okay, welcome again, this Les Arnott here. And today we're looking at this image. And what we're going to do with this is to make this little lad pop out as if he's standing on a, a photograph and he's actually popping out of the photograph. So the finished image won't look exactly the same. When I can find it. I can't. There we go. <laughs> there is the image or the style of image that we're going to end up with. So it looks like he's standing on a photograph and he's popping out of it. And we've got the various, I'll close this one now to stop any confusion. Um, this is our starting image and this is going to be for the background. So this is the image that we'll be using for the background. It could be anything. This is just a, a random photo that I've selected and uh, change to black and white so let's get back to now to actually starting so what we need to do is to create a couple of different layers copies of this image and we'll be cutting the lad out on the one by using a mask and then we'll be creating uh, a rectangular shape um, for the for the bit that we're going to keep so the bit of sand with the sand castles on that will be the actual photo so the way we do that first of all is we go to the layers and we're going to duplicate that twice. Duplicate, click on OK, right click again, duplicate layer. So the right click gives us a shortcut to doing anything with the layer. So there we are. So what we're going to do with this one, and I'm just going to hide the layers below. So I just clicked off on the eyes on there. So we're just looking at this one layer. What we're going to do with this one is to select the actual boy and some of the sandcastles as well. So what we need to do first of all is to use the selection tool. Now there is a new one in the latest version of Photoshop. So I'm actually going to use that and it's called the object selection tool. And you've got a couple of different things you can do on this. You've got different modes. So you can have rectangle or lasso. So are you Lasso, I think that's the, the best approach for me, it seems to work the best. What I'm going to do is to draw around the area that I want to, to mask. So I'm going to go, I'm going to include all of these sandcastles here. I'm going to go around here. So you're just drawing free and around the object. And then you let go and Photoshop tries to work out what you want. Now it hasn't got everything but it's got some of the things that we want so that's good. So I'm just going to add other areas now. So I've still got the same tool on and I must make sure that on these selections at the top there that I'm on the second one which is to add to the selection. So I'm just going to draw around this area first of all so that's better that's that's more or less what I want so I'm going to come over I'm going to include this part and you see it's doing a quite a good job of picking this up now I'm just going to include other bits I'm not too bothered how much sand I've got on here actually I, you know I'd rather have as much as possible around this area. And you'll see why at a later stage. So I'm just going around here, just making sure we've got a bit of sand around there in this area. Okay, so that's that's my starting point. So that gives me a starting point to, to aim at. And I can see a little bit there that I don't want. So on the options bar, I'll click on the subtraction, uh, the subtract from selection tool there, and I'll just draw around this area. Now it doesn't going to be perfect, you just do that and it will try and get the result you want. Some little strands of air there, I'm going to see if I can include that. So I'm going to again go back to uh, the add tool to add to the selection. We'll just get those bits of air in close there. Okay, so that's my starting point. What I'm going to do with that now is to click on Select and Mask. So we can see on the options bar we've got Select and Mask. And if we click on that, 
we go into our masking mode. Now, yours may not come up like this. You need to change, first of all, the view. So you've got different views on there. You can use overlay, you can use all these different ones. Uh, onion skin. And these are these are okay. So let's, let's have a look at onion skin. I can take the transparency up or down. I'm just going to make it like that, just so I can see a little bit of the background on there. Now, I don't think this is going to help me, and the reason I'm saying that is because I'm looking at the hair, and the colours are quite similar, and that's an important part. So I'm going to change this to black. Um, so if we go on overlay, and we can change the colour to black. Let's change the view mode to overlay and then change the color there to black. I can take the opacity down now a little bit and I can just see the hair a bit better now. So it's just selecting a color that helps, helps you make the selection. The sand area, we haven't got to worry about at all. We can leave that like it is, that's fine. We've got all the bits there that we need. But I want to sort this hair out first of all. So I'm going to the tool on the left hand side, which is the Refine Edge Brush Tool second one down and make the brush fairly large the way to use this is just to get the edge going into the area there and we're just going to click and go over that area there not going too deep into the selection I'm just going around the air and then let go now what i'm going to do on this bar here i'm going to alter the contrast i'm going to push the contrast up just a little bit and that will make the selection a little bit better on the air. So I think that's good enough. Let's just zoom in on this. So I'm going to use the zoom tool on the left and just zoom into this area. Now I can see that bit there, I'm not too keen on that. Now the third brush down is just a brush to add and subtract. And I find this the easiest way really. So I want to subtract. So I'll click on subtract on the bar at the top there, on the options. And I make the brush a bit smaller. And we just neaten these edges up with this. So we're just getting rid of the parts that we don't want. And I find this, just take your time. It is important to make a good selection. So this is something you really need to take your time on. Uh, these bits of the ear there. because the, the sand behind is such a similar colour, it's hard to, to pick the ear out, so we're just going to smooth that off by hand. I'm sure this white is there, but it's uh, a bit confusing. I'm going to leave that there for now. Ah, that dull piece I think should not be there, so I'm just going to take that out. So it's just taking your time, go around the old image. You can move around the image by holding down the space bar. If you hold the space bar down, you see the hand appear, the hand tool, that just allows you to, to move around. So we need to neaten this arm up quite a lot. So back to the brush, a slightly larger brush. And it's best just to do a little bit at a time and just drag down, take it off a little bit at a time so you're eating into the, to the arm a little bit. Again, the spice bar to come down. And there. Yeah. It's a good idea to keep letting go because when you let go, 
you've got a point where you can go back to. So by undoing, you can undo and get back. Uh, you have to use the, sh the keyboard shortcut for undo, which I'm not. Can't remember what it is actually. Is it Alt, Alt Z, or something like that in Windows? I know it's uh, Command Z on the Mac. But it just allows you to go back and undo rather than having to to make big strokes and then you click on undo and it undoes loads because that's what you've done. You've took parts off. Come up to this part now. Getting the majority of this done now. Just a few areas. This is the time consuming part. This is the the bit that you need to get right, it's just a little bit that should be there between the fingers. So really take your time on this part, this is the time where you need to, to get things as good as possible. It's only the, your command Z, <laughs> didn't mean to do that, okay let's get back onto the brush tool. A lot of people when they're making a video say, oh, I'll just skip this part, and, you know, you, you know, but I don't like to do that. I like to go through the whole process and show people the effort that goes into it because, you know, you do have to spend time. You can always skip forward on the video if you want to go to the next stage, but it's, it's good to see all the different ways that we get rid of these things. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that now. That is hair actually there, so I need to bring that back in, I think. So let's just go back to the plus. I'll we'll just add this whole bit in here. And then we'll go back to the refined edge brush and just use that to take this out. Okay, that should do. Now what we want to do is that we want to go to the output to section at the bottom there, right at the bottom. You have to scroll down to see that in some cases. But I want to output this to a new layer with layer mask. Click on OK. Double click the hand tool and there's our selection. Now I can see there's a little bit down here that I've missed and that's easy to put right now. If we just go to the layers and click on the layer mask there, it's probably already on that, and we just click on a brush and use a white brush, make sure the mode's on normal, we're at 100% and all we need to do is to resize the brush and just paint in these sections by hand. Now I can actually I'm not scared of uh, including other bits on the sand at the bottom because that can actually be useful. Okay, that's looking okay. I will include a little bit more around here. And we've got a little bit in the middle there. Okay, that's looking okay. That's fine. Okay, so double click the hand tool again. So that's the first part done. That's the hard part. So if we look at our layers again, we've now got this layer. We just this on. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this layer. So I'm going to click on the eye and click on the one below and click the eye 
on so we can see that whole image. What I want to do with this is I want to delete the area that we've just made a selection of. We look at the, the layers again. There's an easy way to do that. If I go over the mask, and I think it's the Alt key in Windows, um, if not, it's Control, <coughs> so try both. I know on the Mac it's Command, so if I hold down the Command key and I click on that, it will make a selection. So although I've clicked on that mask, I'll still make sure that I'm actually on the selection below. So I'm on this layer, this Copy 2. And what I'm going to do now is to hold down the Shift key on the keyboard, so the Shift key is down, and I'm just going to tap the Backspace key. And that will bring up the Fill button, or the Fill dialog box. And we need to make sure that this part at the top where it's got contents is on Content Aware. And then all we do is click on OK, and it will try and remove that area, which it's done. There we go. So now we get rid of this selection. Select, deselect. And I'm just going to neaten this up now. So I'm going to use uh, the patch tool, or the sorry, the spot healing brush. So on the spot healing brush, we just go over and just uh, some of this actually won't matter too much because we won't be seeing these areas. It's just mainly around here. We need to need this sand on the edges there. So just little taps. mainly the foreground that I'm worried about. That's looking fine. Okay, so that's what I want. Just a bit there. There we go. Okay, so next stage. I want to bring the boy back now. So the layer above, click on there and just click on the eye. Then click on the layer below. So we're back on this layer. And what I now want to do on this layer, making sure on the layer below the boy, is to make a selection. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. Now, if I hold down the shift key when I do this, I'm going to start over here on the left hand side, making sure I'm below the boy. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click once. And with the shift key down, let go and then Okay, I've let go of the shift key now. If I hold the shift key down, you can see that it restrains it to a straight line or angles. So if I come over here, and I'll click here. And then you'll see that it's restrained now, moving in a 45 degree angle. So I'm coming to here, about there, and I'm going to click there. Now I'm coming over here and again I've still got the key down. I'm going to have to guess this part. I'm way out. Okay, so if I just let go of the shift key for a minute and I press the backspace key, that will delete that last point. So I want to be about here. Again, I'll hold the shift key down and click. And I want to, again, I'm not quite there so I'm going to backspace again let's hold the shift key down again so we got our 45, uh, 45 degree angle click there I'm going to click there and then come down and now we're in the right place that's about right all right so now when I click We've got the selection. And I can move this slightly, although I'm going to move it slightly to the right, very, very slightly. So to do that, I need to go to the option tools on the top and click on the first button, which says new selection. And once you've done that, you can put your mouse inside and you can drag this around. Now I'm going to move it slightly. So I'm just going over this sandcastle because I want that sandcastle to pop out of the photo as such. Okay, so now we've done that, we go to the layer, 
making sure we're on the layer, and we click the mask tool. So the mask option at the bottom of the bar there, and that gives us our photo. So that's going to be the actual photo. So you know it's coming together now, it's starting to look right. Now, first thing I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to put a white edge along the edge of this so it looks a bit like a photo. But if you do that, what happens is you can't see it because we've got this transparent background. So what I'm going to do on the background just for now, I'm going to go below this layer, click on a new blank layer, and just colour it in black. So I'll change it to black, click on the paint bucket tool, and we've got that, just so we can see what we're doing. Go back to there and then back onto my layer. Now I'm happy with that selection now. So what I'm going to do is to I'm going to commit this mask. And what that means is it will chop it out. At the moment we've still got we still got the mask there and we could paint areas back in or paint them out, but I'm happy with it now. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to click on apply the mask. And then you can see we haven't got a mask there anymore, it's just that object now that's selected. Now I'm going to play around with this. So what I'm going to do with it first of all is to make sure I'm safe. In other words, I'm going to create a copy of this just in case I do things and it goes wrong. So I'm going to right click and duplicate the layer and click on OK. Then the one underneath, I'm going to click the eye to get rid of that. That's just there for security in case things go wrong. It's quite a good thing to do that now and then. If you, you know, if you're going to play around with something destructively, it's nice to have a backup in case things go wrong. So now we want to add a line to this. So to do that, first of all, all we've got on this layer is this object. So if we just go to Edit, click on Stroke, select a colour. Well, the colour wants to be white because it's like the edge of a photograph. Click on OK. And I'm going to guess with the pixels. I'm going to guess it around, let's try 20 and see what that looks like. We can always undo it. It is guesswork, this. Click on OK, and we want it on the outside of the selection. There we go. That's come out OK. That's not too bad. So 20 pixels works on this image. It depends on your image. You may, may need more, may need less. OK, now... I actually quite like it like that, and personally, I would I would leave it probably like that. But you can distort it if you want, and, and we'll have a look at doing that. Okay, now I'm happy with this now. Now we've got that white on there. This part I'm happy with. So the one below, I'm going to click on there and just press the backspace key to delete it, and then I'm going to duplicate this one again, just for security. And then I the one below. So I'm, I'm just, when I'm happy with it, I will duplicate it and go to the next stage. Because the next stage is very destructive and you can go wrong and get in all sorts of trouble. And it's just nice to have the security there. So we go to Edit, Transform, Warp. Now the Warp tool has changed in Photoshop quite a lot. And what I want to do is just, just curl up this edge a little bit. Now we have got bars where it says split. So we've got various things. So if I click on this one and then I go in this area, you'll see a, a line appear. And when I click, it will create that line. So I'm going to click on that again. I'm going to use this time um, a vertical line. Come over here. So this is sort of the area that I wanted to curl up. And I'll leave it at that for now. I'll just, I'll just try this. What I'm going to do now is to go to this edge. And I'm just going to drag this up a little bit to create a bit of a curl. Now, you can see these little bars going off there. And if I go on those, I can drag those. To affect the, the corner of the image. We can drag this one slightly. And we'll just bring this up slightly as well. I 
And that's all I'm going to do. I think that's enough. If you go over the top with this, it doesn't look nice. So I'm just going to click the tick on the options bar. And there we've got uh, curled up these set. Okay, now I'm quite happy with all of that. And you can see now why I've just come slightly over this sandcastle because we included this sandcastle on the mask. And I think it looks nice. It looks like it's popping out as well as the boy. So, and it just makes it look a little bit more 3D effect. So, well, I can delete this layer now with the black on. So, I've clicked on that and I'll press the backspace key, or you can right click and delete the layer. And now we'll go to our background. There's my background. I'm going to click on the move tool, click and hold on to the mouse, don't let go of the mouse, drag it up with the mouse button down to your other image, so to the title at the top, and then bring your mouse down and then let go, and that just brings it on. If you don't do that, you could just copy copy and paste. I'm going to put this put that about there. I'll make it just a bit bigger. Okay. Click on the tick on the options bar. I'm going to now merge the layers above. So that's with the boy and the, the sand there. I'm going to click on the top one, come down to the bottom one of those areas, hold down the shift key and click, and that selects all those three layers. And then I'm going to right click and merge the layers. So now all of that is on here. So I don't want to kill that a bit, or I just straighten it up a little bit. There we go. So there is the image. Now what I will do just underneath that, so if we go to our layers now, I can delete these background layers now, I don't need those, so let's just get rid of those, click on them, backspace key. Okay, so just above the bottom layer, so we click on the bottom layer now, which is the book. I'm just going to put a bit of a, sh a shadow under that. And a way I can do that is just simply create a new layer get a black brush I'm going to take the flow down quite low about 18% make the brush larger I'm going to use a harder brush I'm going to change the hardness of the brush to about three quarters of the way up and then I'm just going to paint Just below that. I think it'll be fantastic. And I'm going to blur that, so I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Give it a nice blur effect. Click on OK. And then I may just bring the opacity down a little bit. There we go. Now all I would do on that is just brighten up the little boy on there. So I'm going to go on that layer. I'm going to go to filter, camera raw. And let's just pop this a little bit. So I'm going to uh, add a bit of vibrance and a bit of saturation. 
not too much, but just enough just to make it pop a little bit. Uh, maybe add a little bit of texture, just a tiny bit, and a bit of clarity just to pop it a little bit. Don't want much clarity. Just a tiny bit, so plus eight and plus seven. Let's just have a look at the temperature. That just adds a little bit, I think, just a tiny bit to it, and we just click on OK. And there we've got our completed image. Now, the background, I think, is a bit too powerful. So what I'm going to do with that, go to the background layer, duplicate it, What I'm going to do with that is just give it a slight burst, blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It wants to be readable, but it wants to be a little bit more diffused. I'm going to click OK on that. Then what I'm going to do is the one underneath that is sharp. So on this, I'm going to create a mask on this. So I'll click on the mask. Remember, white is opaque, black is transparent. So if I use a black brush again, and I'll make the brush quite large, let's take the flow all the way up. And I'm just going to get a soft brush this time. So I want to take the hardness all the way down to the left. And I'm just going to paint in. We're on the mask. I need a black brush. There we are. That's where I'm going wrong. And I'm just painting a bit of focus to the edge of the book there, so it diffuses and it goes back. And it just looks a little nicer, I think. Okay. Little boy, I would like a little bit bigger, so we can click on that now, and I can click on the move tool, and I can just resize that. There we go. Flatten the layers. Layer. Flatten image. There's our completed image. Okay, all the best from me, as on it. Hope you enjoy that.